Hello, this is my video about NSound with real-time audio. I've got my website there. Please join mailing list if you find this stuff interesting and you have questions. A bunch of software used on this Ubuntu box. Most of it is all just app gettable, except for the NSound source code, which I put at the bottom there. First step, I show how to build the Python module. First thing I do is generate setup.py using the scons build system, which will query your machine for various libraries and things, figure stuff out, create a swig wrapper, and generate setup.py. The next step is to run python setup.py install dash dash user. This will compile the nsound C++ code into a Python extension module. Here I fast forward the video so we don't have to wait for the whole thing. It actually takes a little bit longer than what's shown. Then I launch IPython and we will try to import nsound and check its version The version I'm using in this video is 092 development. Now I'll show you some basic buffer manipulation. So I'll go ahead and start IPython. I'll import nsound. And I'll create a sign generator. First I'll set up a sample rate. 48,000. Then I will create a generator, a sine wave generator. So by default, it will create sine waves at the sample rate. So first thing is I'll generate one second at 5 hertz. And you can see what was generated using a plot command. So this will plot the buffer, the buffer object that got created. To show the plots, we use the plotter show method. And then I'll grab that figure window. I'll shrink the figure window so it fits in this video. You can see 5 hertz in the one second from plus 1 to minus 1, 5 cycles. Now I'm going to create a simple envelope. We're going to draw a line segment. This envelope will be composed of two segments, so the first half a second will go from 0.0, .0 to 1.0. That'll be half the envelope. Then I'm going to use this left shift operator that's like C out, C in. If you're used to the C++ standard streams, you use these stream operators. So I'm going to concatenate the second half of the line segment from 1.0 to 0 0.0, half a second. So now we created this envelope signal. And we can plot that, and I'll show you what that looks like. So here you can see the two line segments. It started at 0, goes up to 1, halfway, then from 1 back down to 0. So when we multiply our original sine wave by the envelope, we'll get this plot. You can see the original sine wave, its amplitude was adjusted by that envelope from 0 to 1 and 1 back down to 0. That's an easy way to manipulate signals and, and sound, just multiplying different signals together. So I'm going to copy my original signal again. And I'll just show you what that looks like. It's the original five cycles. Now I'm going to show you some selection 
tools. So here, this expression, I can make a selection of all the values that are greater than 0.5, and then I'm going to hard set them to 0.5. So what I've done is made a selection of samples and then set them to 0.5, so it's a hard limit. So that's another way to manipulate the audio. See the hard limit at 0.5. You can also do the same on the other samples. So here I made a selection of all samples that are less than negative 0.05 and now I'm going to hard limit them to negative 0.05 and now when we look at this it looks more like a square wave because it's been hard limited at both ends. The positive 0.5 and the negative 0 0.5. So that's an easy way to manipulate buffers. Next I'm going to show you how to read wave files. So I'm in the nsound source code and I'm going to change directories into the examples. And here I have several wave files that I use for basic examples. So I'm going to start Python again, import and sound, and we can read a WAV file using an audio stream class, and you can use the constructor to point it at a file name. So audio stream, you give it a string, and I'm going to use California.Wav. And that just read in the WAV file into X. X is an nsound audio stream object, which you can get the uh, number of channels it has. One channel, it's a mono. You can grab the sample rate, 48,000. You can get the duration in seconds, just over four seconds. So you can plot this, and then we need to use plotter.show to make the figure window appear. Let me drag that in here. And you can zoom in in the area you want and explore the signal. You can also zoom in with this other tool. So it's a great, these plots are a great way to explore the data that you have. Now I am going to create a spectrogram. So that was the time domain signal. So I'm going to use the spectrogram object, give it a buffer, give it a sample rate. I forgot, I'll just store the sample rate into a variable, SR, 48,000. So now I'm going to create an in-sound spectrogram object, and you give it a buffer signal. So I'm grabbing the first channel from the audio stream. Sample rate, a window size. Since we know the sample rate and the window size is in seconds, and that it computes an FFT size. Second number there is a step size between FFT windows and the nut all is an FFT window function. So each sample from the input signal is multiplied by the window and then an FFT is applied. So then you can pull up a plot of the spectrogram. Now I'm going to zoom in on the lower 5000, below 5000 hertz. So the y-axis is frequency in hertz, x-axis is time, and you can see the voice of the sample from that uh, California.Wave. So I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit and you can explore the spectrogram. You can see all the overtones. So now I'm going to create a filter and I'm going to filter this signal at a thousand hertz 
and then we'll replot the spectrogram to see how that changed. To do that, I'm going to create a low pass filter, an FIR type, finite impulse response. You just give this a sample rate, a filter order. I'm going to use 128. And the cutoff frequency, 1000 hertz. So you can filter the original signal to get a new signal. So the original signal is X. I just sent it through the low pass filter. Now I have Y. Now I'll create a spectrogram from the filtered signal. So it's the same spectrogram call, just replace that with Y to grab the buffer out of Y. We can plot this and show this. And now we'll see a spectrogram where there isn't any energy above a thousand hertz. Actually it rolls off, it's not a hard cutoff. So right there, cut off at a thousand, you see the voice is all gone above 1500 hertz. You can also plot the frequency response of a filter. So my low pass filter object plot show, which plots frequency response curve. The red vertical line is at 1000 hertz. Y axis here is in dB. So you can create a filter and just call its plot method to get its frequency response. Next, I think I'm showing you creating, a, an, uh, creating an audio playback object. So you can send the signals to your sound card. We give the playback object a sample rate. And on Linux, at least, when you do this, the Jack and ALSA libraries, I'm using port audio underneath, and they're pretty noisy. So you'll see these messages all the time but I'm not running Jack currently, so you can ignore all that. Now you can use the stream operators to send a signal to this audio playback object and it should go to your sound card. California is druggy, druggy, druggy. And then we can send the filtered signal. California is druggy, druggy, So you can druggy. hear that the filtered signal Y is definitely sounds a lot different. And you can write it out to a WAV file just by using the stream operator to a, to a string and it will write a WAV file to it. Since the audio stream object knows its, its own sample rate, it can figure out how to write it out. And you can see here there's the WAV file on the disk. Now I'm going to show you how to set up jack. I've got more details in the user guide, but the most important setting here is obviously having the real time checked and the sample rate. If the sample rate doesn't match with what you're trying to use, it won't work. So you can go ahead and start jack and make sure you see the real time light blink. That means it's running. So I'm going to move this out of the way and then I'm going to launch one of my examples that uses Jack called Bbot and I give it the dash dash Jack flag because I have the Jack server up and again it's no also is noisy but you can ignore that so here in this window you click move the mouse around and it changes the sound in real time <laughs>
dusty clip being falling behind in the end of that recording. Now I'm showing you basically the same demo again, but I've hooked up an oscilloscope and spectrum spectrograph. I do an FFT on the audio, so in the top plot you'll see an oscilloscope like display, in the bottom plot you'll see the spectrum. is the software falling behind. That's it for my demo. Thanks for watching.